Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name.
이제 할렐루야 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 아멘 Good morning everyone Okay, let's do this greeting proper. Good morning, children of the Most High God. It's good to have you all here today to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to ask you all to please stand. I'll call my brother Abraham to the front, and he is going to do our invocation for today. Good morning, church. Yes, it's good morning. And the word of God is taken from Matthew, chapter 28, a reading from verse 1 to 10. And the subtitle of the, in Matthew, it says, Jesus has risen. And as I read, please ponder on the words, because this is the pinnacle of our faith and our belief this morning, because he has risen. And after the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that it shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Indeed, he has risen. Just as he said, Come and see the place where he laid. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away, from the tomb, afraid yet full of joy, and ran to tell the disciple. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clutched his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There will you see me. Amen. Thank you, Brother Claude. And to officially open our resurrection morning service in prayer, I am going to call uh, one of our trustees, Pastor Danny Kessover, forward, and he is going to lead us into prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, we do thank you this morning for that first Passover weekend when the sunless, spotless, without blemish Son of God, the Lamb of God, died upon the cross for our sins. We thank you this morning thank for Good morning Friday, for Good Friday when, the when the Son of God died upon the cross. Upon the cross. And, Lord, and Lord, as we reflect upon, upon this, weekend, this weekend, we reflect upon the, cross, upon the cross where the Savior died the Savior for the sins, died of the, the sins of the world. Indeed, Lord, Indeed, Lord it, was at the cross, it was at the cross, at the cross where we first saw the light and the burdens of our heart rolled away. It was at the cross where our spiritual eyes were opened, and now we have received sight. And every day is a blessed day. Every day is a happy day because of the cross. But we thank you that our Savior and Lord never stayed at the cross. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, the resurrected Christ is alive, not only amongst us, but within us. And for that we give you praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, that the resurrection has given us assurance that we are no longer in our sins. Our sins have been forgiven. Our salvation is made secure. We are established in Christ. For that we give you praise and glory. We thank you, God, for the benefits of the resurrection. Christ has overcome death. He is no longer in the grave. The grave is now empty. And we give you praise for that. 
May we say like the Apostle Paul, may our prayer be like the Apostle Paul, that we may know Christ in the power of his resurrection and in his sufferings. In these challenging times, help us to make that our prayer. So we say thank you, Lord. And Lord, as we echo the words of the old chorus, the grave now is empty. The stone is rolled away, and Christ is alive in my heart. For death which he conquered, in me hath no part, for Christ is alive in my heart. We say, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. So standing up here and looking at hundreds of people, it's not a very good sight because all of you seem very sad. I'm here to remind you today that we are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a celebration service, not a morning service. So let's give God some praise this morning. Amen. All glory to God. We are delighted today to have so many esteemed guests. I'm not doing the official welcome, but it's good to see so many pastors and their wives and our sister churches present here. If there are any pastors and their wives out in the congregation, we'd like to ask you to come forward and join uh, the other men of the clergy here in the front as well. A round of applause for our host church today, Emmanuel Baptist Church. And I'm going to hand you over to Pastor Rodney Joseph, our past president, who is going to lead us into uh, praise. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Come, let's stand together on this beautiful Sunday morning as we give God praise and glory and honor this morning. He's risen, amen? I'm going to say He's risen, and you're going to say He is risen indeed. He is risen. Let's start it again. He is risen. One more time. He is risen. Amen. We serve a God who is alive this morning. We serve a God who is risen. We serve a God who is able, a God who is capable, and a God who is merciful. I want you to know this morning that He is the King of Israel. Somebody say Amen. He is the King of righteousness. He is the King of ages. He is the King of heaven. He is the King of glory. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Law. He is the one who has wisdom. He is our pathway to peace. Amen. 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 He is the way to glory and He is alive. Give your neighbor a high five and say, He is alive. Give your other neighbor a high five and say, He's alive. Amen. I want you to know this morning that my God is irresistible. Somebody say irresistible. Say invincible. You can't get him out of your mind and you can't live without him. Amen. You can't outlive him as well. Pilate could not find any fault in him. Herod could not kill him. Death could not handle him and the grave could not hold him my Jesus is alive he is risen You now, you've 
sting of a power. Death, where is your sting? Conquered by the King. Resurrected One. Shining like the sun. Breaking to the field. Victory is here. Victory is here now. Resurrected one, shining like the sun, breaking to the field. Victory is here, victory is here now. Oh, 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 oh hallelujah. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh hallelujah. Be lifted higher. We serve a risen Savior. Is His best forever glorified? Is His best King Jesus? King Jesus is. good God we serve. What a gracious God we serve. What a mighty God we serve this morning. Amen. He's alive. He's risen. Death has no more power. He has overcome by the power of the Lamb this morning and by the blood of the Lamb. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you going to praise the Lord this morning? Amen. Our praise went outnumbered. Our praise because you rose and defeated grave let's sing this morning let everything that had breath praise the lord praise the lord let everything let everything that has breath that has breath praise the lord Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That is breath. That is breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That is breath. That is breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise on the shore. Praise when I'm dying. I'll praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water. My enemies found it. As long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh my
keep me. I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. I can. Let's sing it out. I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Praise, praise the Lord for my soul. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's no God. Praise cause you're sovereign. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise God you reign. Praise God you rose and defeated the grave. Praise God you're faithful. Praise God you're true. Praise God there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, all my soul. Praise the Lord, all my soul. I won't be silent. I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it? I won't be quiet, I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it? I won't be quiet, I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Praise the Lord, oh my praise the Lord. One more Praise time. The Lord. Let everything, Let everything that has been. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. As you can see, we are having uh, some technical difficulties. But we expected that this morning because the devil is not happy that we are all here worshiping an almighty God. And all I can say is we are, if I may use the words, kicking it back old school, where we never had a projector and where we could sing from the words that we knew or that we learned. So uh, we are going to enjoy praise and worship today despite whatever difficulties or hurdles may come our way. So it is an honor this morning to uh, welcome the President of the Baptist Mission of South Africa, that is Pastor Aston Chinsami, and he is going to officially welcome you. Amen. Amen. I think you can give me a better round of applause. Louder people, louder. We serve a risen Savior this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Amen. And I'm going to say the old school saying that Christ has risen. And what you're going to say? He has risen indeed. Amen. So this morning on behalf of the uh, executive of the Baptist Mission of South Africa, I'd like to extend to each and every one of you a very, very, very warm welcome to Phoenix. Okay. So we're glad that you could be here this morning to celebrate and to make a joyful noise and to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you to all the churches that have responded to all our pastors, to all our guests that are here. We uh, are so glad that you could be with us this morning, even to make a joyful noise and to the King of Kings and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we're going to make a joyful noise this morning. We're going to declare that He is God, He is King, and He has risen from the dead, and He is Lord this morning. Do you believe that? So we're going to just continue into a time of praise and worship, and I'm going to hand it over to Leanne again. So I bring greetings to you today from all our ministry partners, both local and international. They have sent their blessings and are praying for us as we continue to serve an almighty God. 
Yes, we did receive long emails and it would be a tedious task to read all of that to you. But be rest assured that although we are here, all over the world, people are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And all our ministry partners are keeping us in prayer as we, the Baptist Mission of South Africa, gather together in this manner to praise an almighty God. So I'm going to ask you all to stand at this time. And we are going to sing our first opening hymn. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Amen. We don't need words for this one because we know this one. This is a, a pure Baptist hymn. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, ever, ever lose its power. Because it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength will never lose its power. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power and it reaches and it reaches to the And it flows, and it 
Churches form the Baptist mission of South Africa. And when we do have our executive meetings, the church sends through delegates who elect uh, an executive committee. And they also, with the executive committee, put a president in place. So today we are going to have the induction of uh, Pastor Aston Chinsami as president of the Baptist Mission of South Africa. Before he comes forward, I just want to read something to you. It says, to the president of the Baptist Mission of South Africa, we praise God for selecting you to lead his people into parts of righteous and holy living. May his vision always be your vision. Like King Solomon prayed, so give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? From all at your home church, Stenger Baptist, we congratulate you on your God-ordained appointment and we pledge to pray for you continuously as you persevere to uh, serve and thrive in his ministry. So that is from Aston's, uh, what can I say, childhood church where he grew up. Uh, and that is Stenger Baptist, which is a part of Basa. But today we are, have saved him and he's now a part of Baptist Mission. So a round of applause for Aston. And I'm going to call Pastor Rodney Joseph at this time, our past president, and he's going to do the induction. Amen. Praise God this morning. It's a beautiful moment. It's a wonderful moment. It's an important moment today as we have come to induct the president of the Baptist Mission of South Africa. What a joyful task this is today to, uh, for me to do this. And so I'm so glad and I feel so honored to induct uh, the president of the Baptist Mission. I'm going to ask if uh, Leanne Chinsami can just stand together with Aston here this morning. Amen. Dear family of God, we are met together in the name of the Lord Jesus, the head of the church, to induct Pastor Aston Chinsami into the ministry of the Baptist Mission of South Africa and to recognize him as its president. It is our belief that the calling into Christian ministry and to a particular sphere of service is both of God and of the church. And therefore the church must diligently seek God's will. And this is confirmed by a God-given inner conviction on the part of the person that is called to lead the organization. For as much as we believe, Pastor Aston, that you are acting in obedience to the call of God, it may seem needless to ask for any further assurance of your faith and sincerity of purpose. But in order that you may yourself better realize the solemn trust you have undertaken and that this congregation may better understand your mind and your will, 
We will ask you these questions in the name of Christ and to his church. We address to you. Pastor Aston, if you agree, would you say, I do? Do you believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? And do you confess a new Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Do you believe in your heart that you are truly called of God to give oversight to the Baptist Mission of South Africa? Do you promise to execute your charge with all fidelity, to preach and teach the Word of God from the Holy Scriptures, to lead the congregation in worship and to administer the ordinances, to tend the flock of Christ and to do the work of an evangelist? Dear members of the Baptist Mission of South Africa, to you as members of this organization, acknowledge and receive Pastor Aston Chinsami as president of the Baptist Mission of South Africa, promising him all due honor, respect, and support in the Lord. And if your answer is yes, will you please signify by standing? I'm going to call all our pastors present this morning to come and around Pastor Aston and Sister Leanne as he would kneel for prayer and as we would induct him, all our pastors. Come, let us pray. If you can put your hand on him somewhere. Thank you, Father. Lord, today we thank you for these divine moments. We thank you, Lord, for these appointed moments this morning. Lord, because we know that you have chosen your man. You have chosen your servant for a particular task. And Lord, our prayer is this morning, as we dedicate him unto you, Lord, and as he would lead our organization, we want to thank you firstly, Lord, for his availability. We thank you, Lord, that he has given himself in your service and in your kingdom, not just from now, but, Lord, from many years before. Lord, you have been molding him. You have been shaping him. You have been teaching him. You have been schooling him. You have been correcting him for a time such as this, where he could lead this organization to greater heights, to greater glories, to victory upon victory. Lord, today I pray, Lord, that your hand of grace, your your hand of mercy, your hand of strength, your hand of wisdom will rest upon your son this morning. I pray God today that you will uphold him at all times by your righteous right hand. I pray Father today, Lord, that you will stand with him. You will stand before him. You will stand behind him. You will go with him wherever he goes, Father. I pray God that as he begins to speak, he will begin to speak with oracles of wisdom. I pray God that as he begins to express found your word. It will be a new word in a new season. It will be a relevant word, Father. And Lord, I pray God today that your presence will abide with him, him and his family at all times uh, together with his wife, Leanne, as they serve you in this capacity. We pray God that you will lift up this couple, Lord, with your hand today. Hold them close unto you, Father. Protect them from all the attacks of the enemy protect them father for any slanderous word I pray God today your blood covering upon them your blood covering upon Pastor Aston and Lord I pray God today that wherever he goes your favor will go with him your power will go with him your presence will go with him your peace will go with him father and into whatever arena he represents the Baptist mission in I pray father today that your special favor will rest upon your son. So we thank you for him today. We bless you for him this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Pastor Aston Chinsami, you have been called by the Holy Spirit to this ministry. And as the Holy Spirit has spoken to his church in this church and said, set him apart for ministry to which I have called him. I declare you now duly inducted and appointed as president of the Baptist Mission of South Africa. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you. You may take your seats this morning. Thank you. Once again, I greet you in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. And I thank you for entrusting me with the leadership of the association. I am deeply humbled and honored to accept this role as your new president. I say to you of our association, it's because each and every one of you make up the Baptist Mission of South Africa. And without you all here this morning, this would not be possible. I'd like to express my profound gratitude to my predecessors for their unwavering dedication and commitment to the association. 121 years of tireless ministry by the past leaders that has seen this association grow. We thank them for being a beacon of faith, hope, and love for us all. And I pray that I may continue this righteous path and further reinforce our association with God's word and his roots. Furthermore, I would like to extend my gratitude to the churches and the ministers who believed in my potential to lead this morning. Your trust is not something I take lightly, and I pledge to devote all my energy and passion into this role steering our worship into a fresh, spiritual, rewarding direction. As I step into this role, I aim to guide you through the Word of God, showing love and kindness, practicing, teaching compassion, humility, patience, but most importantly, living and breathing our faith in service to Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge to serve you with authenticity, and openness, striving to offer wise counsel, relentless support, and unwavering leadership. Morning. I need each and every one of you to be able to fulfill this role that I've been placed in. I ask not only for your prayers, but also for your patience, wisdom, knowledge, and active engagement in our association. I pray that we can work together in harmony and mutual respect, edifying each other as we worship. All glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This position is great responsibility and accountability to our Father in heaven and to each church represented here this morning. And I wish to request your permission to mention the following these are the points that are brought out in the November elections.
continuity. As people who have been on the ground for 121 years, so much of ground has been captured for the kingdom of God. I am not called to be a founder of an association, but to lead a firmly founded one to higher grounds for God's greater glory. For this reason, there will be a lot of things that must continue. In fact, there are some things which might need to be revived in order to continue to get them to grow. Discontinuity. Since life itself is a dynamic, we should expect this discontinuity of practices that are no longer helpful. In some areas, we will need to expand our views on issues in order to include areas we missed out on in the past. We should be willing to make very, very serious adjustments. Amen. Amen. Not the word of God, but in our daily living and in the way we run our affairs. My last point, unity. There is a need to promote greater unity in our association. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. amen. A greater unity in our association. Our past leaders have done their best, and I believe that in comparison with other association, God has assisted the BMSA with the principle of agreeing to disagree without bitterness. It is my hope that we shall continue to use this skill in our association for the handling of our differences. Moreover, we must ensure that the Church of Christ is governed by his character of love. So my theme for the next two years is youth empowerment. We are grateful to God for what this ministry is doing right now for our youth. However, it is my desire that we move BMSA into a season of growing new leaders. And I'm sure you are tired of seeing us year, year after year, year after year. So we want to grow our new generation. We want to revive them, we want to restore them, and we want to speak life into them this morning. I strongly believe that God is the leader of his people. I am only a vessel of revealing the word that God has placed in my heart this morning. I envision BMSA not just a place of worship, but also a beacon of operation in our communities. We are called Baptist Mission of South Africa, where service to God translates to service to humanity as commanded in Matthew 25, 40. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done unto one of the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. I warmly welcome every suggestion, idea, and constructive criticism that will help build and strengthen BMSA. Philippians 2, 2 says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love, being one in spirit and one mind. Verse 3 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility. Rather in humility. Value each other above yourself. Not looking to your own interests but to each of you to the interests of others this morning. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So this morning, we cannot do it on our own. We'll be inducting the new council this morning, and we cannot do it on, the, on our own. I cannot do it on my own. But we can only do it through your prayers, through your support, and through you being present at our events. So this morning, 
It's time to let go. Time to let go of every hurt, every bitterness, every unforgiveness, and anything that does not imitate the humility of Christ in our churches and in our lives. So before I take my seat, I'd like to thank all those that have assisted me on this journey, to my wife, my kids, my parents, and our local pastor, Leslie Benjamin and Anton Jamal. We are the church. We are a body of Christ. We are a community. Together we can make a difference, and together we will grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord. And lastly, I rest on the assurance of the word of God in Philippians 4.13, and it says, Philippians 4.13, people. Amen. May God bless us all, and may his grace be abundant in our lives as we embark on this journey together. I thank you. So during our November meeting, we also had our elections. So this morning, I'm going to introduce our new council and our department leaders. Firstly, I'd like to call upon our vice president, Pastor Aniston Pele, and he is the pastor of Upper Room Lighthouse Ministries. Let's give him a round of applause this morning. Our past president, Pastor Rodney Joseph from Emmanuel Baptist Church. Our general secretary, Mrs. Leanne Chinsami. Our treasurer, Mr. Claude Abraham from Arena Park Baptist Church. Our trustees, Reverend Danny Kessevel. And Reverend Leslie Benjamin from Phoenix Baptist Church. Our missions director, Pastor Gerald Chetty from Chaka Scroll Community Church. And our department leaders this morning, the Baptist men's leader, Mr. Ezra Everdeen. The women's department leader, Mrs. Laura Joseph. Our youth department, Ms. Shanika Govender. And our leader of the Christian Education Board, Mrs. Salome Chetty. So ladies and gentlemen, these will be your office bearers for the next two years. And this morning, we're going to induct them and commit them to God in prayer. And even as they would commit their lives and in serving their department and in serving BMSA over the next two years, we know that God will use them in a mighty way. Friends and family of BMSA, we are gathered together to set the servants of God apart as they dedicate themselves in service to him for the important ministry to which he has called them in our association. We believe that the instruction of both young and the old in the truth of the scriptures is of great responsibility. This responsibility can only be fulfilled in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. These servants of Christ are completely dependent upon him for their performance in their ministry and for their dedication to him. Let us consider God's instructions to us from his holy word. Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. 2 Timothy 2 verse 13. Do your best 
to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Colossians 3, 16. We assure them that their labor in the Lord will not be in vain. We pray for them that their service will be crowned by precious souls being won for the kingdom of God and believers being built up in their precious faith. We now come to this important moment when you will stand before the altar and to take upon yourselves the task of caring for the affairs and the leadership of the Baptist Mission of South Africa. Also, the affairs of the Baptist Men's Department, Women's Department, Youth Department, and the, our children, the Christian Education Board. May you look upon these assignments you now assume as special opportunities for service to our Lord. And may you find joy and spiritual blessings in the performance of your respective duties. Yours is no light task. For the ongoing of the association and the destiny of souls is in your hands. The development of Christian character is your responsibility. And leading the unsaved to Jesus Christ is your high objective. May God grant you wisdom and strength as you do his work. This morning, I charge you with these questions. Conscious of the great importance of the task committed to you, do you promise to do all in word and deed as to be an example to those to whom you minister? You can respond with a yes, I do. Do you promise in the instruction to give to remain true to the truths of the word of God and to uphold it as a rule of conduct for all Christian life? And in order to do so, do you promise to dedicate yourself to thoroughly study the Bible so as to equip yourself for this task? Do you promise to uphold in prayer those entrusted to you so that the power of the Lord may work within them and their lives may be fulfilled with love? You have heard the pledge entered into by our leaders for the coming years. I now charge you as a congregation to be loyal in your support of them. The burdens which we have laid upon them are heavy and they will need your assistance and prayers. May you also be understanding of their problems and tolerant of their seeming failures. May you lend assistance joyfully when called upon so that as we work together, our association may be an effective instrument in winning the lost to Christ. And if you agree with that this morning, can I ask that you please stand with me and even as you'll ask that you raise your right hands towards our leaders, and I'm going to call upon Reverend Abel Pille, and he's going to come with him before God in prayer. Kindly bow your heads and turn your hearts towards these young, energetic men and women of God that will be representing us which is indeed a tedious task, but how fortunate they are that they have been called to represent not just the church or the Baptist mission of South Africa, but to represent the kingdom of God, the highest office that one can ever hold. And they are truly privileged, but together with privilege goes responsibility and we know it's going to be time, involved, energy, resources, money, that's right, and of course the support of every local church. We have made our pledges, we have made our promises, and now we want to pray for this beautiful group of leaders. Teamwork 
makes dream work. So we thank God for that. Heavenly Father, we are truly blessed today, dear Lord, to have representation from different churches for different offices, Lord, in the Baptist Mission of South Africa. We thank you, Lord, for our predecessors and, Lord, the examples they have set, Lord, and precedents that they have set and are wonderful to know, dear Lord, that we will follow suit. We pray, mighty God, today for your supernatural grace, your favor upon your children today. Dear Lord, even as they have assumed the responsibilities, we do realize they will meet they will need the support of their wives and husbands and family and above all, dear Lord, the church. And most importantly, our God is on our side. We are never alone. We have God who will take us through, who will help us through. Oh, Lord, we know, Father, that this is about your kingdom, extending the kingdom, not just holding an office, Father. Ultimately, we want want to see souls saved for the kingdom of God. We do realize, Father, that your coming is imminent. Your coming is soon. And we want to gather, Lord, the unsaved and bring them to the foot of the cross that they may know Christ in his fullness. Lord, we thank you today. All of the responsibilities this committee has and this office holds and our president and his precious wife we know, dear Lord Jesus, uh, is huge, uh, but Lord, we know with God's grace, this is going to be possible. And today we make a promise and a pledge, Lord, to honor you. We now dedicate, Father, this beautiful president and his precious wife and this committee, Father, the executive of the Baptist Mission of South Africa, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Congratulations. God bless you. Amen. So I'm going to ask you at this time to stand. We have some distinguished guests amongst us, and um, I'm sure some of them have come late at the back. Uh, it's an honor today to have uh, uh, Jonathan and his family. That's my new son-in-law, all the way from California. And they're here visiting. Thank you, Fabiola and Isaac. It's good to have you here, Jonathan. Uh, but I just don't want to stop there. I want you to turn around and greet somebody next to you. Just take a minute or so, greet somebody, wish them well. I'm sure you haven't seen them in a while. Amen. And now it's time to give unto the Lord. And I'm going to ask you to just get your tithes and offerings ready. And I'm going to call Pastor Rodney. And he's going to lead us into singing our next hymn, Up From The Grave We Arose.
Jesus, my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph of his voice. He arose up from the domain and he lived forever with his saints to Just waiting for the stewards. I think. Okay, let's bow for prayer. Okay, let's bow for prayer. We come before you, Heavenly Father, in the name that is above every other name. In the name of every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your presence is here. We thank you, Lord, for the advent of this day, the, the day, dear Lord Jesus, that you rose again from the dead, that we could sing this wonderful anthem, Up from the grave he arose. Oh, we thank you, Father, for the triumph over the grave, triumph over death, triumph over sin. We thank you, dear Lord, that your grace is sufficient for us. 
And thank you, dear Lord, that even as we could worship you in our giving, we pray, O Father, dear Lord Jesus, that every cent will be used to the extension of your wonderful kingdom. And we thank you, dear Lord, that even in our giving, O Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can receive from you. Continue to bless this service in a mighty way, Father, that your spirit will continue to move. In Jesus' name we pray, as we all join to say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. So we've acknowledged all our um, dignitaries here, esteemed guests here, but we would also like to remind our online viewers that we are praying for you and thank you for watching and we know that you are enjoying a blessed service this morning. So do you all believe the saying that local is lekker? Yes, local is lekker, right? So we are going to have some uh, biryani later for, for lunch. But when I'm talking about local is lekker, we decided to have somebody to preach today that is not just somebody that is a guest to come over, but somebody uh, in where most of us grew in front of. A seasoned man of God, a man set apart um, and chosen and has been serving BMSA for a long time. But I just wanted to leave you with the thought of local is lekker. But to officially introduce our speaker for today, I would like to call our pastor, Gerald Chetty, to do the introduction. Family and friends, I greet you in Jesus' precious name. The name that is above every other name, resurrected name, powerful name for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's my joy and privilege to introduce to you our speaker for today. This young man served the Baptist World Alliance Planning Committee in 2015. He also served as the Baptist Mission of South Africa Missions Director for the past eight years. Together with the late Pastor Jacob Moses, they were instrumental in the building of the Jabula Baptist Mission Church in Mozambique. He now serves as a trustee in the Baptist Mission of South Africa also pastoring the Phoenix Baptist Church for the past 30 years. A servant, faithful leader, a role model, a man that you can always trust, is always there for some good advice, a great man of God, and also a man of the great and mighty God that we serve. You know something, if it wasn't for him today, I would be the best looking man. So this morning we are talking about none other than the pastor, Reverend Leslie Benjamin. Let's put our hands together for you. Thank you, Pastor Gerald, for introducing the highly esteemed and honorable speaker for us this morning. But we want to worship the Lord together today. And we want to bless Him. And we want to lift up our hands together and, and say, Lord, we love you for everything you've done. We love you for the cross. We love you for your blood. We love you that you died for us. And we love you today, Father, because the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives inside me and abides within me and dwells within me today. And so this morning, all I want to do is lift up my hands to the heavens and say, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. You're the Father of creation. You're the risen Lamb of God. You're the one who walked away from the empty tomb that day. And you set your people free with love and liberty. And I will walk with you every night and every day. Come, let's stand as we worship our God this morning. We come into your presence to sing this song to you, a song of praise and honor for all the things you brought us through. You gave a life worth living, a life of love with you, and now I can't stop giving 
All my praise is back to you. You're the Father of creation, the risen Lamb of God. You're the one who walked away from the empty tomb that day. And you set your people free with love and liberty. And I will walk with you. Sing this song to you, a song of praise and honor for all the things you brought us through. You gave a life worth living, a life of love in you, and now I can't stop giving all my praise. Let's sing it out this morning. You're the father of creation. The risen Lamb of God You're the one who walked away From the empty tomb that day And you set your people free With love and liberty And I will walk with you Every night and every day You're the Father of creation you're the risen Lamb of God You're the one who walked away From the empty tomb that day And you set your people free With love and liberty And I will walk with you Every night and every day Come into your presence to sing the song to you, a song of praise and honor for all the things you brought us through. Let's worship him together this morning. Father, we love you for everything. We give you all the glory, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor this morning because you are Lord of Lords and you are King of Kings. You are righteous, the righteous ruler of the earth. We thank you, Father, this morning that you are the Father of creation. You are the risen Lamb of God. You're the one who walked away from the empty tomb that day. So we worship you this morning. So we exalt you this morning. So we thank you this morning, O oh Father. So we love you today, O oh God, because you are throned in glory glory and splendor you are robed in power and majesty you're our deliverer you're our strength you're our hope of everything everlasting so we stand before you today so we bow before you today with our hands lifted up and with our hearts full of praise we give unto you our all this morning father we give unto you our worship we give unto you our thanksgiving we give unto you our praise today, O oh God, for you alone are holy, for you alone are worthy, for you alone are mighty, for you alone are wonderful, for you alone are glorious. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Father. A thousand generations bowing down to worship. To sing the song forever to the land. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the land. Your name, your name is a higher is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry oh 
creation cries. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. And if you've been forgiven, if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to the land. And if you walk in freedom, and if you walk in freedom, if you bear his name, if you bear his name, sing the song forever. Sing the song forever to the land. Your name, your name is a higher. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, oh, power and position. Your name stands above them all, and the angels cry. Sing it out, your name is the greatest, 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 your name is the your name your name your name is the highest, your name the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones all thrones and dominion all powers and position your name stands and the angels cry and the angels cry holy all creation cry, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever, hear your people sing, hear your people sing.
you up this morning oh father we lift you up with our worship we lift you up with our praise we lift you up with our thanksgiving this morning father you are holy 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 forever and as the angels bow at the throne before you this morning bowing down before you and singing holy holy are you lord god almighty the old earth is filled with your glory the old earth is filled with your power the old earth is filled with your praise and here in our church this morning here in phoenix south africa the baptist mission of south africa declare holy 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 forever you will always be holy father we declare you are worthy lord oh you are worthy jesus people sing yeah your people sing holy to the king of kings holy you will people give him a loud praise this morning thank you Jesus you will always be holy forever we're gonna call pastor Glenn Rico this morning and he's going to come and pray for God's servant and God's word this morning gracious father we thank you for this wonderful time that we could come together to fellowship but more just to give you the praise the glory and the honor that is due to your name father today we thank you for your people that have come with expectant hearts we thank you that this morning even for your chosen vessel that you have ordained we thank you for a prepared word we thank you for the anointing upon his life and we pray today, Lord, even as he would share that which you have laid upon his heart, may it fall on good ground. So, Lord, prepare our hearts, our ears, and our minds that we would accept the things that you would have us to know and to do. So, bless your servant afresh today. In Jesus' most precious and wonderful name we ask this. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you. God bless you, sir. You may remain standing, thank you. The reason why I want you to stand is in respect and reverence for the Word of God, which we're going to read this morning. And the first reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 28. Matthew 28, and reading from verses number 1, and going all the way down to verse number 10. Matthew 28, verse number 1 says, After the Sabbath, at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake and the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were like white as snow. And the guards were afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus. Who was crucified he is not here he has risen and everyone said Amen. then go quickly and tell the disciples he has risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you into Galilee there you will see him and know that I have told you 
So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid and yet full with joy. They ran to tell the disciples, and suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They said to him, and they clasped his feet, and they worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Let's quickly flip over to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 12. It says, But if it is preached that Christ has been risen from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ that has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. And all of God's people said, Amen. You may take your seats. Now you deserve your seats. Give yourself a wonderful round of applause. Amen. Warm greetings to you in the wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm so glad and it's, I have this wonderful privilege and honor to be speaking to you this morning. And the last time I shared at the Easter assembly was in the year 2000 when I served as the president. 24 years later, Gerald, that is why I'm still a young man. Thank you, sir. And thank you for the elaborate welcome and God bless you this morning. And to the entire Baptist Mission family, we're so glad and delighted to have you to be part of this wonderful service, even as you come up to lift up the name above every other name. Amen. The word of God says, is the resurrected, is the risen, is the reigning, returning redeemer. And the word of God says, Amen. Amen. Let's try that one more time. He is the resurrected, is the reigning, returning redeemer. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Therefore, this morning, we stand here knowing that we serve a God that is not dead, but a God that is alive. Amen. Therefore, we believe this morning that the presence of the Lord is in this place. I feel like I'm in home ground this morning. I normally speak for one hour, and for this morning, I feel so tempted to go for two hours. Is this okay with you? I'm just kidding, all right? Some of you are getting excited. But I want to say, a few years back, my wife and I, together the team from, from Cape Town, Johannesburg, we went to Israel. So on the last day, we were in front of this, what you would call the garden tomb where Jesus was buried. So I was given the opportunity to do the communion service at this tomb. So I was like excited. So anyway, finished the communion service. There's a lady that came up to me and says, Pastor, you know what? When I die, I want you to do my funeral. But a few conditions she laid. Number one, it has to be a cremation service. I told her, listen, I'm in Durban, you're in Cape Town, I've got a friend, pastor, no, no, I'll fly you up, I'll put it in my will, everything will be done. She says, okay, she says, I have another condition. The condition is this, you must play two songs. The first song is, this girl is on fire. I said, what's the second song? The second song is, burn, baby, burn. Well, now that I've got your attention... My sermon title this morning is Why the Resurrection is Important. Amen? Amen. There are a lot of skeptics, a lot of scientists, a lot of atheists that don't even believe in the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. But therefore, this morning, I want to say to you Christianity hinges on the death, on the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, and the coming again. Of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And if these things didn't happen, you and I would be not sitting in this place. God knows where we'd have been. But because Jesus died and he rose again, and the Bible says, and he's coming back for the church, you and I could be excited knowing that we serve a living God. That is why I'm saying to you this question why is the resurrection important for the child of God? If there was no resurrection, like Paul says in the word, our faith is an useless, it's faithless. It has no meaning whatsoever. Amen. But you and I this morning must understand, we know that Jesus conquered death on the cross. Amen. Yeah. And it goes on to say, He conquered the grave. He is our risen Lord and our Savior. Yeah. And therefore this morning, ah, we can rejoice knowing that we serve a God that is always with us. And His profound words, I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. That alone speaks about someone that is not dead, but someone that is alive. And we believe in the risen Lord because he was recognized 
by his disciples. It is validated by scripture. The resurrection of the Lord is history making, earth shaking, and more importantly, it's life transforming because our God is not dead, but he is alive. And that is why when you serve Jesus, you ought to be excited. He is our faithful God. Wonderful God. It all started on Friday. And as you know, on Friday at 3 p.m., Jesus was on the cross. And the Bible says that Sabbath was fast approaching. And you know, and, and every one of you know when you're a Jew, but before Sabbath starts, that bodies must come down and they may be placed in a tomb. But in Jesus' case, he was still hanging on the cross. Joseph of Arimathea came, went to Pilate to seek permission. Can we retrieve or claim the body of Jesus so I can place him in my tomb? Let me tell you about Joseph of Arimathea as well. There's a story that is going on in Jerusalem. Jesus met Joseph before he died. Jesus said to Joseph, when I die, I want to use your tomb. Joseph, I'm not so sure because I have to go and check with my wife. Because Jews just don't allow anyone to be buried in their tomb. So he approaches his wife and he says to the wife, listen, I met this man Jesus. And he said to me, he wants to use our family grave or family tomb, whatever you want to call it. And his wife says, no way that can never happen. He says, honey, he says he's only going to bore it for the weekend. Amen. <laughs> That's why we serve the risen Lord. Jesus only borrowed the tomb for the weekend. He's alive. And you and I need to understand this morning, we serve a living God. And by 3 p.m., when Joseph claimed that body, he placed it in a tomb. And if it did not come down, the Romans would have burnt the body of anyone that was approaching Sabbath. And therefore, we find Jesus was placed in this tomb. And as you begin to read, the Bible says, Pilate issued a decree stating that, that a stone will be placed at the entrance of the tomb, a seal will be over the tomb, and more importantly, soldiers would be placed. So no one can steal or take the body away from Jesus. But early Sunday morning, something happened. These women were on the way to the tomb to embalm the body. They could not do it on Friday because Sabbath was approaching. In the Jewish custom, you're not allowed to touch a dead body. You'll be unceremonially unclean. That is why they did not have time to do the embalming on late Friday afternoon. They could only do it early Sunday morning. And as these ladies began to make their way to the tomb, few things crossed their minds. And they tried to figure out how we're we going to roll the stone away. And the word of God says, and as they approached the stone or the tomb, they found the stone has been rolled away. And found the tomb was to be empty. And they were greeted by this angel that says, do not be afraid. The same Jesus that you're looking for is not dead, but he's alive. He is not here, he is risen. And therefore this morning, ah, the word of God says these same women were stunned by the words of this angel. And they began to run back to tell the disciples what had happened. And church... Why the resurrection is important, point number one. Because it dispels every fear and every failure from every one of our lives. We ought to know it is only the resurrection that can remove every fear from any one of our lives. And the word of God says, and it propels you and I to worship a living God. Like Mary Magdalene fell at the feet of Jesus. That's what the resurrection power does to everyone. It should propel you, push you, and bring you to the place where you need to serve a living God. Amen. There should be no compromise on a Sunday morning. The reason why we gather on a Sunday morning, because Jesus rose Amen. on the early, on the first day of the week. Amen. And here you and I find ourselves sitting in the house of God. Online TV should just put it off. This is not what the word preaches or tells you about. COVID is over a long time ago. Never forsake the assembling of God's people. Amen. Put it off. You need to come together. When the body and the head meet on a Sunday morning, something unique happens. 
We are the body of Christ. Jesus he is the head of the church. And when there's a connection, you know what happens to you. You get revived, you get charged up, and you get blessed because there is no fear. You're in the presence of the Most High God. In church, the Word of God says the opposite of faith is fear. From Gethsemane to resurrection, all of the disciples were dead scared. Fear gripped their hearts. And they all dispersed. And they all went their own way, their own direction. The Bible reminds you, and you can ask Thomas. Thomas was also hiding. He only meets the resurrected Lord a week later. And some of us are like Thomas. For one whole week, God knows what we have been doing. We have been in hiding. We hide from the presence of the Most High God. Second Timothy 1 said, For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that's why fear, the word of God, the resurrection dispels all fear that you and I have. We need to believe that we serve a living God. And I know in life we are overwhelmed with pressures of life. And sometimes you find ourselves to be in a situation that is beyond our control. And you cannot even figure out, Lord, what more must I do? It is only the resurrection power of the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ can get you back to where you are. Where you want to go. And church, this morning I want to say to you, there are many of you that are seated here today. Those angelic words that were said to these women, do not be afraid. You and I, there's no need for us to be afraid. Because we have come beyond doubt and despair. We have surpassed fears and failures in our lives. And we this morning can truly say we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Nothing can keep us down. No spirit, no power can keep us down because Jesus is alive. And He's given you and I the same power so we can serve the living God. And we are encouraged by the writer of this hymn who says, What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege is to carry everything to God in prayer. What a friend we have. His name is Jesus. And if you don't know him this morning, and I want to introduce him to you. The word of God says, and he says, do not be afraid. I am with you. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. The word of God reminds us he's a God that is always with us. Life is full of uncertainties. That leaves every one of us unsettled in life. And sometimes you try to figure out, Lord, which is the best way? And you would probably pick up the phone and you try to phone, your, you phone a friend and, and voicemail on the other side. And, and you somewhat get desperate and you try your neighbor and he's not there. But let me just remind you. The line that is open 24-7. Jeremiah 33, call unto me and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. It's a God that sticks closer than a brother. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And I want to tell you this morning, uh, it's unfortunate fear is, a, is common to human experience. And some of you cringe when, when fear comes your way. Some of you have fear of the dark. Some of you have fear of the snakes. Some of you fear those, those, those uh, a geckos, the lizards that run in your home. Ask my wife, will tell you. You should not even go into the bathroom if one of those things are there. But you see, church, when Jesus is on your side, all fear goes away. And it slowly slides away because you're connected to the living God. Don't allow fear to control your life. Don't allow fear to somewhat derail your destiny. You and I need to know this morning our, what we require is faithfulness in the face of fear. Amen. God will lift you up. God will turn your life around. God will make a difference in your life. And I pray this morning that Jesus has already given us hope. He says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? For the sting of death is sin. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Those same women, fear gripped them. Those disciples, fear gripped their hearts. And many others that serve Jesus. The Bible says, and we all deserted him and they quit on him and they ran away. But we serve a God who will not abandon. We serve a God who will not quit. We serve a God who will not turn away from us because his word says our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you and I can ask or think. This is a God that you and I serve. 
And we give him joy, we give him praise this morning. Weeping is just for the night. Joy comes in the morning. If you're fearful right now, and I want to say to you, joy is coming your way. Amen? Amen. The Spirit of God is coming your way. The resurrection power is all for you. And all you need is to tap in and say, Lord, I'm your son, I'm your daughter. Change my life. Make me to be the one that you want me to be. Number two, is resurrection increases your faith. And we, we're so glad this morning that we are people of faith. Amen? We're not faithless. We're not frivolous. But rather, we serve a God that is constantly with you and I and is reminding us that He's with us. He's a faithful God. Paul says, if Christ has not been raised from our, then our preaching is useless, and so is our faith. Paul reminds the church at Corinth. And as you know, Corinth was going through a whole lot of series of problems. Problems of marriage and divorce and communion, glossolalia, meaning speaking of tongues, immorality, and so many issues. And the most important issue was the resurrection. The church, together with Corinth itself, did not believe that the dead can be risen or be alive again. This was a struggle in the early church. And you and I that are seated here this morning, I could say the same thing. There, are, Like I said to you, there are many issues we can debate. You can debate things like, can women wear pants and come to church? You can debate whether you want to sing hill songs or not. You want to debate, can women, or is it a sin for women to wear makeup and come to church? I think it's a sin not to wear makeup. <laughs> I'll give you some time to, to let it simmer down, for ladies. In this life, we can debate about many things. Give me a break, I need to preach now, right? I said, in this life, we need to debate about many things. Paul shares in Acts 9, he says, listen, I met this man on the road to Damascus. He transformed, he changed my life. There's something about him. My faith is no longer the same. I was once on a mission to persecute the Christians, to kill them. But when I met him on the road to Damascus, he turned my life around. He transformed my life from a persecutor to a preacher. Amen. This is what Jesus did to me. And Paul began to share and he reminds those people in Acts chapter 9, listen, I serve this God. Therefore, Philippians 3 and 10 says, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. And Paul reminds you and I, there's something about the risen Lord. There's something about this God that you and I serve. Paul says, my faith has increased. Not only, my, not only personally, but powerfully, painfully. It's a practical experience. I know what he has done in my life. As a question, I want to ask you, what has Jesus done for you? How is your faith this morning? Where are you right now? Some of you are strayed. You're strayed away from the faith. You've turned your back. You've walked away from God because God has never come through for you. You are trusting Him for a breakthrough in your life. It never happens. And you find your faith has now been waived. Galatians 3 and 11 says, For the righteous shall live by faith. Amen? Amen. Paul is reminding the church in Galatia, what you really require is tenacious faith. The word tenacious means to, to cling on, to hold on. No matter what happens, whatever storm, the tsunami, or hurricane comes your way, you're going to hold tight knowing that God is still with us. Amen. Therefore, we're reminded that this morning hour, that our faith will increase. And church, there are many reasons why we find ourselves with burdens. I want to say to you, no child of God is exempt from the struggles of this life. Don't let anybody fool you and say to you, life is easy. It's like a bed of roses. John 16, 33, Jesus says, in this world you'll have trouble. But be of good cheer, I've overcome this world, Jesus says. You might say, well, pastor, you know what? I'm a peace-loving person. I don't even look for trouble with my neighbor. But let me tell you, when a child of God, trouble comes knocking at your door whether you like it or not. 
because we're not exempt from these things. Jesus says, listen, you'll have trouble. Therefore, he said to the disciples in John 14, let not your hearts be troubled. In a few weeks, I'll be going away to prepare a better place for you. And church, the word of God says, Jesus gives you and I the ability to remain calm in the midst of chaos. He gives peace in the times of your tranquility. And church, when things are going against you, keep your peace. Amen. Keep your faith. Know one thing for sure. God is with every one of us. Amen. And you look at the word of God, it reminds us of the different levels of faith that you and I have at some times. And Jesus said to the disciples, oh, you of little faith. When he saw the centurion man, said, I've never seen such great faith. Then he said, your faith as tiny as a mustard seed, you pray this mountain shall be moved. In church this morning, the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Look at the different levels of faith. I don't know where you are in your faith. Maybe I, I'm just like a child, childlike faith, trusting God for greater things. Maybe you're like the centurion. You've got great faith. You can step on the water and you can walk. But Jesus is reminding you on our Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith deep down on the inside must remind you there's a God that is alive. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen, Hebrews 11, 1. And I believe this morning God is reminding you and I that our faith need to be galvanized this morning. You need to come back to God and say, Lord, help me. I want to be like the disciples. Lord, just increase my faith. Give me more faith. So I can believe and I know that your word declares that, that you will promise you will not quit on me, Lord. You will not give up on me. So many of us find ourselves to be straying from God is because of the lives that we live and we lead. Because sin somewhat seems to dominate your life and mine. I try so hard not to do this. But I still do it. And I fall into sin and I fall into error. This is why we are weak. But the promise is when you turn to a living God, the word of God says, he who comes unto me, I will no wise cast out. He's a faithful God. And if you want God to, to help you in your faith, come back to him. God can turn your life around and he can make a difference in your life. He's a wonderful God. He's a caring God. He's a merciful God. He's a gracious God. He's a God of mercy, God of grace. Let me just tell you quickly the difference between the two words. Mercy, He gives me or He keeps me from what I deserve. But grace, He gives me what I don't deserve. Amen. Let me illustrate quickly. Mercy, you're driving on the highway. You exceeded the speed limit. The cop pulls you over. I have to give you a ticket. You deserve this ticket. It's because you broke the rules. Yeah. It gives me or keeps me from what I deserve. That's mercy. Grace. He gives me something that I don't deserve. Amen. Yeah. I don't deserve what I have right now. It is only the grace of God. Amen. Same with you. All that you have, it is only the grace of God. You don't deserve it. There are some things you never prayed for in your life. You never prayed for finances. You never prayed for the job promotion. Your boss knocks on the door. Tomorrow you're doing that new job. Amen. This is the grace of God. This is how God works. And if you've got faith, it'll kick in. And it'll show you who this God is. And how God can open the door that has always been closed in your life. Amen. Let me close with my third point this morning. His resurrection secures your future. Amen? Amen. That's what life is all about. You hear on, on the face of the earth. And the next stop is going to be with Jesus. Amen. Some of you are like in my age. You're already like in the airport. You're sitting in the departure lounge. <laughs> or let me say this joke. When you're 40... You're driving to the airport. When you're 50, you got your bags, you're just stepping in. When you're 60, you're in the airport and you're like pacing up and down. When you're 70, you're on the plane. 80, anytime you're going to take off. <laughs> I don't know where you are this morning, all right? But just get ready, your time is coming. 
Jesus reminds you and I, our future is secure. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. Dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. And he goes on to say, listen, Paul says, he appeared to Peter and to the twelve and to the five hundred. He appeared to James and all the apostles and last, he appeared to me. What is Paul saying? Let me just remind you again. He appeared to Peter, he appeared to the twelve and to the five hundred brethren and to James and to all the apostles and last, he appeared to me on the road to Damascus. Paul is saying, listen, we are all eyewitnesses. We saw the resurrected Lord and our Savior. He's not dead, but he's alive. And more importantly, he's coming back for you and he's coming back for me. In Acts 17, 32, when Paul was preaching in Athens, the people laughed at him when he spoke about the resurrection. Paul says, you can laugh all you want. But for him, I live, I move, and I have my being. I met him face to face. Three days I was blind struck. He turned my life around. I know he's the living God. Amen. And church this morning, and I want to say to you, we serve a God that he's not dead, but he's alive. He's resurrected. And the word of God says he's coming back. He's a resurrected. He's a risen. He's a reigning, returning redeemer. And no one this morning I can say is not coming back. And church this morning, there are skeptics that still believe the soldiers stole the body. Think about that. Just sleep on that for a while. The soldiers stole the body. If they stole the body or if they found the body, all we need to do is to produce Produce a body. This is the remains of Jesus. He's dead. He's not alive. But you know what? It's been a debatable issue from the very first early church right up till now. People still debate about There's a lot of things we can debate about. I just started a few things earlier on. But there's also a lot of things they found that proved it existed. They found the remains of the Titanic deep down in the ocean. They found the Shroud of Turin. They found the remains of Jericho. To do, to, up to today, they've never found the body of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Which means he's not dead, but he's alive. And alive forevermore. History proves this morning there are things that have been found. But right now, history cannot prove Jesus is dead. But we have the word, we have the scriptures, we have eyewitnesses that have seen the risen Lord and reminds you and I, he's not dead, but he's alive. So if you're still troubled here this morning, not sure where you're going, let me just say to you, like Jesus said to the disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. And when he told this to the disciples, it brought separation between the disciples and Jesus. The word of God says they were deeply dejected by the idea of separation that he was going away. Let not your, I have to go and prepare a better place for you. When I come back, I'm going to take you to be with me. So Jesus says, he's got a better place for you. And if you think the house that you're living in, the car that you drive, or the boat that you own is the best, let me tell you, he's got a better place prepared for every one of us. Amen? Amen. This is absolutely nothing. It's going to all fade away someday. And, and church, let me just remind you, your life today is slowly ebbing away. And you look at yourselves, ladies, you're buying the most expensive anti-aging cream. And you're putting, listen, you look good on the outside, inside you're all wearing out. It's not going to work. But see what, Pastor Abel, am I right? <laughs> see what Paul says in close. The same chapter. Paul said, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will all not sleep. But we will all be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable. And they will be changed. This mortal body must put on immortality. 
You know what Paul is saying? Look at all of the scars, all of the wrinkles. Look at all of the dents you have in your legs and all of the big patches. All of these things, when you meet Jesus, it'll be gone. Amen. Amen. You'll have a brand new glorified body. Just like him. I get worried about my gray hair. Wife says, listen, you're getting older. Every day she reminds me. I said, please don't pick on me. Just leave me alone. One of these fine days, I'm going to be with Jesus. Amen? Amen. And I just cannot wait. There's no better place to be but to be in the presence of the Most High God. David says, all I seek to do is to dwell in the presence of the Lord all the days of my life. And church this morning, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 4, sorry, 1 Peter 1 and verse number 4, we all have an inheritance that will never perish, never spoil, never fade. Simply mean it is not subject to decay. This place that God has reserved for every one of us is going to be with us from now till eternity. And church, I don't know where you are this morning hour, but I'm here to tell you, like Jesus stood at the tomb of Lazarus and said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he's reminding you and I, even though we did, we're going to live again with him. I want to close by saying to you this morning that there's going to be this time where it's going to be uninterrupted fellowship with Jesus. Amen? Amen. I can't wait to be on the other side. I can't wait for my wife to join me someday. And all of our church families and friends and people that you know that are blood washed, redeemed, sanctified by the precious blood of the Lamb will all be together on that great and notable day. But before that happens, the Word of God says, and the Word of God reminds you and I, and Jesus is watching every one of us. I am the vine, you are the branches. If there is no, no one bearing fruit, we're going to be cut off. It'll be a sad day when I'm not going to see you on the other side. We need to get our lives in order. We need to get right with Jesus. 1 John 1 9 says, If I confess my sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us, purify us, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He's a faithful God. I don't know where you are in your Christian walk of life. But if I'm just saying, making a humble appeal to you, if you have backslidden, you've grown cold, you've turned away from the faith, and you feel, well, Lord, I'm not so sure you will still take me back. Listen, He's a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. He will give you back hundredfold whatever you're trusting God for. All you need to do is like that prodigal son, just need to come back home. Amen. There's a father that stands with his arms wide open and he's looking into the horizon and he knows one day my son is coming back home. And God is waiting for every one of us to come back home to him so we too can enjoy this wonderful life that Christ has reserved for you and for me. So the reason why the resurrection is important is because all our fears are gone. We serve a God that is alive. And secondly, it reminds us that our faith is now galvanized. We know these eyewitnesses have seen him face to face. And more importantly, we are reminded this morning that our future is secured with a living God. Amen? Amen. So we need to know one thing for sure, that we need to get on the other side. We need to cross over. From this life, from mortal to immortality, Paul is reminding us there has to be a makeover in every one of our lives, a complete change in our lives when you meet Jesus face to face. Church, we have to continue that what Christ has put into our spirit or given us 40 days from now is the ascension. Or reminds you and I, and he gave the disciples the words in Acts 1 and 8. When the Holy Spirit comes, you will be my witnesses. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So our mission is not, in, not complete yet. So the Holy Spirit is a continuation work. Where Jesus stopped, he's continuing the work. So you and I continue with the Holy Spirit to keep the work alive and to keep it going until we meet the risen Savior again face to face when he comes to take us to be with him. That is why the resurrection is important. 
is because you and I can sit here or lift our hands. All our fears are gone. We know our God is alive. And we just lift up His holy name. We're going to call the worship team this morning to the front. And we're going to sing this beautiful song, Amazing Grace, the new version. How sweet the sound. It reminds you and I, all our chains are gone. We are now set free by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. So we can give Him praise and we can give Him glory this morning. Oh, to Pastor Rodney, there's your mic. Hallelujah. Amen. Sugar last time. Come, let's stand together this morning, even as we just sing Amazing Grace. I just said to you this morning maybe you're just wavering in your faith and you have drifted away from Jesus you've turned your back away from God it's never too late Amen. you can always come back to me yes. and saying Lord draw me nearer and nearer to you Lord this is what Jesus will do this morning if you need prayer you can just lift up your hand wherever you are yes. praying that God will reach out to you and he will touch you whatever you're trusting him for he will make a way this morning. He's our faithful God. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. Just trust God to make a way. And say, Lord, we know this morning how without you we're absolutely lost. And Lord, we're counting on you this morning. Lord, to bring us back to you. 
And Lord, turn our lives around and remind us that you are a wonderful God. Pastor Daniel, this morning, will just come and pray and commit you before God and just lift up your hand and say, Lord, I need you this morning. Trusting you, Lord, for a miracle. Trusting you, Lord, for a turnaround in my life. Jesus, this morning, can make a way. Pastor Daniel, thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the power and the message of your word. Mm. Lord, we just thank you that the resurrection gives us hope. Yeah, thank Lord, you, Lord, it tells us, oh God, that there is hope beyond our sin, yeah. beyond the grave this morning, mighty God. Yeah. And Lord, you see on from heaven as your word has planted its roots in the lives of our people. Thank I you, thank Lord. you, Lord, that those seeds will produce life in abundance. You said in your word that you have come to give us life. And therefore, we receive this word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the authority and the power of your word. For your word, the word of God declares the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of the Holy Ghost. And therefore, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the resurrected power of the word of God. We just thank you, Lord, that you turn our crucifixions into resurrections. And this morning, O oh Lord, there's a life, there's a spirit within us that tells us because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you're alive, we can face our mountains in our lives, mighty God. You have given us victory over sin and death this morning. And thank you, Lord, for using our servant in such a powerful way. Lord, this, this is a word that we need to be hearing in this season and this time. Lord, we just thank you that you'd multiply, O oh Lord, all that we will receive this morning. And may the goodness of our God saturate our presence this morning. May you move like never before. And may your gift of love, grace, and mercy surround us at all times. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody would say, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Pastor Leslie, for that inspiring word. Have you been blessed this morning? Okay, we're almost there. But uh, today we want to uh, acknowledge Pastor Leslie. Pastor Leslie, we're going to ask you to come forward together with your best half. Okay, so, so the reason why we are acknowledging the, the two of you today is you can come up. As a, a senior minister in the Baptist Mission of South Africa, you have served BMSA diligently. And as I said earlier, and I will reiterate that, that there are many of us that are seated here today whose lives you have positively impacted on. And we are most grateful for that. And that is why when Exco uh, met and we discussed him, he said the most appropriate person to share the word of God on this auspicious day would be none other than the local pastor, Reverend Leslie Benjamin. And the reason why his other half is with him is because he never walks alone. Amen. Amen. Right. So she is always by his side. And uh, if he gets anything done properly, it's only because of her. And uh, they were here very early this morning. They were here at about uh, 6 a.m. just to make sure that you all are comfortable. So, Pastor Leslie, we are grateful for you. And I think it's appropriate that we call the new president, Pastor Aston Chinsami, to do the presentation. A round of applause for the Benjamins, everyone. Thank you, Pastor Leah. So we um, have also come to an important part of our service now, and that's the communion. But before we do that, I'm going to ask the worship team to come forward, and they're going to lead us into singing the last hymn, Because He Lives. So I'm going to ask you all to stand, Pastor Rodney. Sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died. 
to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior time together. Can the pastors come and join me who's assisting this morning? All the pastors. What a blessed time it is in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our risen Savior and uh, we count this uh, a honor and a privilege to gather together um, with this number of people. What we've experienced from 2020 up till now it's only the good hand of God. So continuing this morning. Yes, you may be seated. 
continuing this morning uh, this time of worship around the table of the lord and uh, wonderful to know there is enough room enough space around the table and the lord invites us this morning to gather together and we come with a heart of thanksgiving a heart full of gratitude and in communion is the right for us as believers ongoing instituted by the lord that we could do this as often as we can and uh, we are reminded today of the sacrifice that jesus made and how wonderful to know today that we celebrate the resurrection of jesus christ and in doing so by partaking of communion we also say that we anticipate the return of jesus christ so this morning i pray that we'll continue uh, having these blessed moments together and uh, our stewards will come forward our beautiful pastors just give them a nice loud clap this morning we are grateful for them and they're going to come and and serve you so you'll get a miracle meal it's a called miracle meal this pack if you're not uh, used to this there's a there's two sleeves on this so be very careful when you are opening it uh, you can get it open but please wait for instruction uh, we could ha all have communion together so as the music would play our pastors would come and uh, make their way to serve our people today amen If there is anyone who did not receive, kindly raise your hand. We don't want anybody to miss this opportunity together, stewards. Are we okay? 
Anyone did not receive? Amen. Let's all stand together. Mm -hmm. At the cross I bow my knee Where your blood was shed for me and There's no greater love than this See, you have overcome Because you have overcome the grave your glory fills the highest place what could separate me now sing at the cross i bow my knee because at the cross i bow my knee where your blood was shed for me there's no greater love than this you have overcome Cause you have overcome the grave Your glory fills the highest place And what could separate me? You tore the veil Cause you tore the veil You made a way When you said that it is done You tore the veil we just look to you this morning we thank you Lord for the word that you've given to us first Corinthians chapter 11 reading from verse 23 Paul is writing and giving instruction to the church he says for I received from the Lord which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Bible says in verse 27, pay careful attention. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. For us to just consider this morning for a few moments. But a man must examine himself and in so doing he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. This is serious this morning. Verse, 20, verse 29 says, for he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly for this reason many among you are weak and sick and the number have fallen asleep prematurely just take a minute this morning as the music would play get your sleeves open up and have just take a moment very quickly just to do an introspect something that you need to leave at the feet of Jesus we thank God for his precious word this morning are there some dead situations that needs resurrection in your life? The power of Jesus is yours today to live within you.
Father, we just thank you. Pastor Glenn, won't you just offer a word of prayer this morning? Gracious Father, we thank you today as we come to the table of remembrance. We realize that it is a table of restoration. It is a table of bringing together just because your body was broken for each one of us. Father, today as we come solemnly bowed before you, our hearts humbled, we thank you for the great sacrifice that was made on Calvary. And Father, we appreciated every bit of what your son Jesus went through. Now, Lord, even as we would partake in a bit, we are mindful that your son did it just for us. Bless us and draw us closer to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus, which is for you, let us eat this morning in remembrance that Christ died for us. The Bible says Jesus took the cup, likewise also after supper, saying, This is my blood, a new covenant. And we thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that washed us clean. Pastor Becky, won't you offer a word of prayer this morning? Thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning. We thank you so much for giving us this wonderful opportunity as we partake on this cup. Lord, I pray that as we partake on it, it's not just a matter of being thirsty, but we need a deep understanding that this cup stands for your blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. We thank you, Lord, that as we partake on it, there will be a new change from the inside out of our lives. I pray, my Father, that this uh, kind of a service to each and every one of us, Lord, is not just a matter of uh, doing it for the sake of doing it, but there is something that is happening right now as we partake on it. Those who are sick, Lord, I pray for healing as we partake on it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, even for the promises and the package within this kind of a service that will take place to many of us here, Lord, and our lives will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you. The blood of our Lord Jesus was shed for you. Let's take in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you. Father, we thank you once again for such a wonderful time as this where we could gather around the table. Your blessing in your hand is upon us. Thank you for each one that is gathered today. I pray that you would continue to bless them and we anticipate your return in Jesus' name. Amen. The stewards will come around with these baskets to collect your empty containers. Thank you, Pastor Aniston. So if I could just have your attention for just a few minutes. And this is just to give you some of the forthcoming activities in the Baptist Mission of South Africa. So you are aware that the CEB Family Fund Day was postponed and that was due to inclement weather and uh, obviously some difficulties that we were anticipating on that day of March 21st. So this event has been postponed and you will be notified sh shortly of the new date for this Fun day. But we are encouraging you to support our children, bring your children along. Remember, it is a family fun day. Then on the 13th of April, we have a missions training. The missions training is a joint event with the missions department and the youth department. So the youth department or the youth committee and the missions committee will meet shortly after our service today, just for five minutes here in the hall.
at this corner, uh, and they will meet Pastor Gerald. Now, we all know about our mission trip to Mozambique that happens annually, and we haven't been in a while due to COVID and the repercussions thereof. But this year, we are embarking on a trip to Mozambique, and there is a team that will be going up. So we are encouraging all those that wish to go on this mission trip to Mozambique in June, from the 18th of June to the 22nd of June, to please attend this missions training as well. Now the venue is still be, to be confirmed, but it will be an hour and a half in session, a long in session, that's from 10 to a half past 11. But Pastor Gerald will give you more info with regards to the Mozambique mission trip and the missions training as well. And then we have the Bethany School of Mission. So the Bethany Schools of Mission is a missionary training center, and they are situated in the different areas uh, around for you. So somewhere close to you, you will find a school. If you do not know of a, of a mission school that's near you, you can speak to Pastor Ger Gerald Chetty. He is the principal of the Bible school. So we are encouraging you to attend. There's quite a few that are soon to be graduates, Pastor Gerald. So um, we're looking forward to that. And also the ladies camp is in July. Uh, we are encouraging the ladies, if you have any queries, Sister Laura is here today, you have Sina in the front. So we're asking that you please um, speak to Sister Laura should you have uh, any questions with regards to that. So there's lots of exciting activi activities that are lined up and we are entrusting, just as you supported our Resurrection Morning service, that you will support all our Baptist mission activities as well. So to move the vote of thanks today, I'd like to call upon Pastor Rodney. Pastor Rodney. Thank you, Leanne. On behalf of the Baptist Mission of South Africa, we want to convey our sincere thanks to each and every one of you for attending uh, our Easter Rally 2024. It's been such a joy, such a privilege, and such a honor to share this special day with all of you. But we want to place our, our deepest thanks to um, Pastor Leslie and Sister Merle Benjamin and the Phoenix Baptist Church for once again hosting us um, in a such a special way uh, here at your church and we really appreciate you and all your members of your congregation that have put the work together to have us here. We know it did take a lot of work, a lot of effort from both yourselves, from your uh, council and also from the members that were here yesterday, also this morning and throughout the week for setting up. So we want to thank you uh, for that today. May God continue to bless you as you serve us at BMSA. Then we also want to thank um, the churches, um, Emmanuel Baptist Church for hosting us um, this um, morning for our service. Thank you, our church. Our church is the best church in BMSA. Okay, we bless the Lord. Thank you, church, for your cooperation and for everything that you've done to host our function as well today. Thank the Lord for his servant, uh, pastor, who shared his word to us this morning. What a powerful word, amen. Amen. And we bless the Lord for that today. And we also want to thank our musicians and our worship team. Our musicians, it's a collaboration from the Chakras Call Community Church, led by Pastor Gerald and Sister Salome. Thank you so much. And also Emmanuel Baptist Church. So thank you all to all our service providers, whichever way you have provided a service for us during this uh, function of ours. We want to say thank you, thank you. Thank you. And to the BMSA Executive Council, thank you for all your hard work. We love you and we appreciate you. To all our pastors, thank you for bringing your churches. To those that didn't come next year, we will see you at Easter Rally 2024. God bless you and have a blessed day. 25, sorry. Okay, so thank you to uh, Anayat and uh, Zach for the live streaming and the photographs. We appreciate that. So I'm going to ask you all to please stand. Have you been blessed this morning? So if you have been blessed this morning, let's give God some praise. <laughs> Truly, he is worthy of all our praise. Come on, keep going. I didn't say stop. Keep going, keep going. Here we go. To him be all the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we want to thank you for traveling from far. And why just to come to our Easter or Resurrection morning service, it's always good where we uh, meet and 
eat and greet. So that's what Baptists are known for. So we want to thank you and we wish you all a, sa a safe trip back home. Before we close in prayer, I just want to let you know that there are four feeding stations outside. It is self-service, so you can help yourself to your biryani. There are our young people from our um, youth department that will be assisting with the cool drinks as well uh, and helping you wherever they can. So please, if you need anything, you're more than welcome to ask them. So I'm going to call Pastor Shem to lead us in prayer, after which Pastor Becky will also come forward to pronounce the benediction. Praise God, amen. We can remain standing since it's the last time we will stand or be on our feet as we reverence the Lord and thank God for his goodness. Let's pray, let's pray. Glorious, mighty, heavenly Father, what a blessing to come before you through your son, Jesus Christ. And for your word to affirm to us, Lord Jesus, how you have truly made a way, you being the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, this prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving, even as we reflect, Lord, over many weeks and months of preparation Times of prayer, Lord Jesus, anticipation as, been, as we've been looking forward to this, the Easter rally of 2024. And indeed, Lord Jesus, as our people have gathered together, I believe we all can affirm and say it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Even as Psalm 118 says, better is one day in the, uh, the, the Lord, uh, this is the day the Lord has made and we will be glad and rejoice in it. And even as Lord, we reflect over the beautiful moments we've experienced Lord, we just, we just ponder over Psalm 23 that talks about us being led by the quiet waters and offer you that restores our soul. Lord, even as we just take in the beautiful songs we've heard, Lord, the powerful word, Lord Jesus, the fellowship of our people, truly it's been a time of restoration. It's been a time for us to say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. And Psalm 23 affirms, Lord Jesus, how you anoint our head with oil and our cup overflows. Many of us would return to home, Lord Jesus, to our homes having this feeling of our cups overflowing because your Holy Spirit has been in this place to really touch and embrace every effort and, every and, effort and to give to us every blessing that we have prayed for. And indeed, Lord Jesus, you have truly completed the great work, Lord Jesus, that has begun in this place. We thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you for the blessing of returning home with the knowledge and the blessing of the resurrection power that will always be our portion and strength. We thank you for this glorious meeting. We return praise and worship to you as we pray this prayer in the glorious, eternal, and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity. Thank you for uh, the MC, PMSA, just to allow me to, uh, to seal up. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to say it has been an honor talking on behalf of the PMSA to say the benediction is here that it has been a great time coming together for fellowship and we believe that our life will never be the same again. Amen. So now it's time, I know I won't eat your time, it's time for eating. I won't take more time and I say thank you so much as we go back. I pray that whatever the message and everything from since the morning coming to this end, it has been of a great benefit to you. Hallelujah. So I want to say thank you so much even to Sister Lee and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Let's just bow our heads. And uh, I'm sure some of you have not done this in a long time, but we're going to do this together. And we're going to say the, the Lord's Prayer. Let's bow our head together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless. Enjoy lunch. Thank you. There is a resident photographer, so if you want to take photos at the
Is risen forever. 